there was a need to uh, offer information in the state of New Jersey that would help entrepreneurs uh, find the resources that would uh, help them start and build their businesses. Within New Jersey, 98.5% of the employers are small businesses, and they account for over 50% of private, se private sector employment. Just last week, the Kauffman Foundation asked the question, where will the jobs come from? Because they were analyzing the situation with the economic recession and the downturn that we've been facing. They analyzed U.S. Census Bureau data on firm age rather than firm size, and they concluded that young firms, those firms who are five years old or younger, accounted for all net job creation from 1980 to 2005. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize and thank the sponsors, because without the sponsors, this conference might not be possible. Why you want to be in New Jersey, why you want to expand in New Jersey, so I'm going to give you my top ten reasons uh, for that. Um, one is, the first is that we have over 1,400 international businesses in the state, which is really critical as we think globally. Second, 24 of the Fortune 500 firms are here. Third, 15 of the top 25 pharmaceutical companies have either their global or U.S. headquarters in New Jersey. Northern New Jersey's university. At Seton Hall, for instance, you can obtain a certificate in entrepreneurship, which is a great way to expand your knowledge and your contacts at the same time. I also urge you to reconnect with your own university. For instance, Seton Hall involves alumni entrepreneurs in many events, and I know that Fairleigh Dickinson, NJIT, and Rutgers do the same. We are all here to help you. Um, and it's so great to be here again. I was here last year and had such a great time and met so many interesting people who, uh, if you watched my show, you saw them show up on my show just a few weeks later. Founded Diapers.com in 2005. We are an online internet retailer of all baby goods. Everything from car seats and strollers to diapers, wipes, formula, toys, clothes. Uh, we grew the business um, on a shoestring the first 18 months before we got venture capital. We've since done five rounds of venture capital, raised $58 million. Uh, we're at a $250 million uh, run rate, going to half a billion in 12 months. Uh, and today we are globally founded people. Theorem offers products and services to uh, internet advertisers. So. Uh, globally, we have 500 people. We have operations in India, uh, offices in London, in the U.S. We have an office in New Jersey, obviously, and uh, Las Vegas. Uh, 60 days ago, we uh, launched Latin American uh, operations. So uh, we have over 100 customers that include uh, Google, uh, Yahoo, Microsoft, New York Times, Hearst Digital. Uh, average uh, growth is about 75% compounded uh, year over year. And uh, we hope to be a 1,000-man company in the next uh, 24 months. Uh, we are still bootstrapping, not a, not a cent of outside funding. Uh, we do it the old-fashioned way. We do excellent work, uh, retain our customers, and put a lot of money back into the, growing the business. Most recently was the president and CEO of a company called Pump It Up, which is private party facilities for kids' parties. Uh, we have franchisees all across the United States. Prior to that, I was the CEO of Huntington Learning Centers. Both of these companies were founded by entrepreneurs, built by entrepreneurs, 100% privately owned, and then got kind of fouled up. And uh, I, I'm the guy that gets brought in to get it back on track and put in the right direction. Um, the most recent one being Pump It Up. Uh, Pump It Up, I did bring in private equity. Um, the company bought a controlling interest. The entrepreneurs remained for one year. After one, I, I ran the company. After one year, one entrepreneur was asked to leave. One of the founders was asked to leave. The other one remained and was our vice president in charge of innovation. We have uh, programs at the U.S. Small Business Administration to help small companies gain access to federal contract opportunities. It's a huge market. Uh, it's expanding because of Federal Stimulus Act uh, funding at a variety of federal agencies. And in addition, there's also uh, opportunities to latch on to contracts at large corporations that have direct contracts with the federal government.
These companies generated over $210 million in revenue last year, uh, so some of them are making money. And uh, they brought in an additional $115 million in, in third-party funding, uh, largely through Angel and VC and SBIRs. Um, and they graduated about 55 uh, self-sustaining companies last year. We've got a great panel here, an exciting one. I will never get a chance to say sex, drugs, and open source technology again. So um, I'm excited uh, about this and uh, checking out the products too. I, was saying, but. I don't think I had any idea what is, what is truly involved. So for me, I don't know that it would have changed anything, but maybe the awareness uh, would have made the first six months easier because it's not that the pace now that I'm 14 months into it is any different. It's just now I know what to expect. So I would say forewarned would have been forearmed for me. It's the way you deliver the message and you know, being the person that's responsible for sales and marketing, again, you know, the fact that you know, when, when I deliver the numbers, you know, they don't care why you missed. Um, and we talked about that in the morning session as well. It's better to be conservative and, and exceed your target than to be too aggressive and miss. And even little things like that, if I had known that ahead of time, um, and been a little more conservative. Again, I don't think it really changed. It would have changed how we manage the business or where we are, but people's expectations, their perceptions of you, and when you're in this position, that's very important. How to 100%, 110% please the customer, because the customer is your boss. And uh, you know, now what we do is, it doesn't matter what it is, even if it's the customer's fault. For example, if they made a mistake in the order or they got a wrong thing, we will take a hit on it. We will pay out of our pocket. Our motto is never to lose a customer because we, I mean, they come back, back and back because of customer service.